each of you had to have an influence to get yourselves into the business. So who influenced you most to get your start? And once you got into the business, what did you have to do to, because each of you, you have so many voices in your repertoire, you know, how many, all, with all those voices, what do you have to do to take care of that, the vocal cords? Like, do you have any techniques or tricks that you learn? Heavy drinking, heavy smoking. <laughs> um, live life. Live life, uh, party. Um, Absolutely. Sing. Try doing sing. eight shows a week. Yeah. But seriously, I'll decide, you know, the, the, the best exercise ever, that, that I've ever used for is, is singing. Sing every day, speak out loud every day. Uh, don't really smoke, don't drink. Drink is, you know, it's just like, you know, but um, I, I find that that helps quite a lot. I find a glass of red wine mixed with a raw egg and beaten and drank the night before, you know, you, just before you go to bed, and you'll wake up in the morning with a nice, fresh throat. I, right? It sounds awful. It, it yeah, sounds it disgusting. Uh, Hold on. But I'll tell you what, I learned it from an opera singer. Okay. You mix a raw egg with red wine, you knock it back before you go to bed, and because every time I felt a laryngitis coming on, like last night, I was feeling rough. You knock it back, the next morning you wake up and... Your voice is good. Well, that's crazy. I know it's weird, Never but it's heard true. It. I'm going to have to convince somebody else to try that first. <laughs> I'm going to watch you do it. And oh, uh, I've, I've done it many times. I, I, I've got no, no worries. But, yeah, I would say for me, singing is the best. As far as uh, heroes, you have to realize I was that kid in the living room on Saturday with my head on my fists uh, watching Saturday morning cartoons. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, I, I'm I'm every kid who's ever been mesmerized by Saturday morning cartoons. So, to grow up and and be in the presence of of my heroes, those that were still alive when I got a shot at this, Dawes Butler, Dawes yep. Butler, and I I I was in studio with Mel Blanc Mel early Blank. early. I had a blind date with Judy Jets and his curly quasar. I mean. You know, uh, these these are these are my fantasies fulfilled. Yep. So uh, you, you don't, there, I don't have to search very hard for motivation. Um, you know, and some of my heroes <laughs> that I had the great good fortune of working with are not the names that are on the tip of everybody's tongue, but you know, June Ferre and Mel Blanc and Jonathan Winters and holy oh, cow! Man. And it, on Duck Man, I worked with James Brown. You know. Cornfed couldn't get James, couldn't get Doug Mann to come out of the shed, and I said, "Well, if I can't get you to come out of the shed, maybe the uh, God, Godfather of Soul can get." It. And then I introduced, I said, "Come on out, James Brown, <laughs> Doug Mann, get out of that shed, Doug Mann." <laughs> <laughs> and Joe Walsh was on the show. I mean, I, so I've had heroes from all aspects wow. of my life. Uh, I've, I've been, uh, I'm no problem being motivated to to uh, to get into the career that I've had. People that I would have never dreamt of being in the presence of, much less in the booth with. I grew up as an impressionist. I was the fifth grader who did impressions of Jimmy Stewart and everybody. And then I did a live show with Mel Blanc. And he looked me in the eye and he said, Impressions of a hacks kid like Rich Little. Ooh. And I had met Rich Little. Um, and Rich Little didn't like me because his young four-year-old son preferred my Kermit the Frog to his. Oh. Um, but when God talks to you and says something, you take it seriously. And he said, original characters, that's what you do. And I gave up the impressions. Unfortunately, he forgot to tell me about voice matching and sound alikes, but what the heck? <laughs> But it was like from that point forward, it was all about creating original stuff. And I'll never forget that moment. 